Happy Sabbath, church. Um, for the first uh, scripture reading, I'll be reading from uh, the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 51 to 55. And I'll be reading in the New International Version. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Thank you so much. It's our turn to the part of the program that we're doing right now is the biography by our father. And actually, this is something that he wrote himself. So I'm going to read to you exactly verbatim the way wow. that he wrote it. <laughs> I have it. You guys don't have it. So just follow along with me. In his own handwriting, this is what he said. To you, my loving children, Eitayo, that's my older brother, Fuluwasho, that's me, you all call me John. <laughs> Fuluwasho. Uh, so Anna, if you're wondering what the F in my middle name is, Fuluwasho, yes. Ulutoi, next to me. Adiremi, back in Nigeria. Adewale, back in Nigeria, so all five boys. Five boys. God bless my mom. <laughs> <laughs> this is the presentation of my life's journey, just a summary. I give all glory to God Almighty when he said to me, Moses, Ademola Makinde, your weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Amen. So, the journey, the first part. He wrote it in two parts. So the first part, A, here we go. My father, pa, Paul Alao Makinde, a devoted Christian, got married to my mother, Mrs. Alice Omoriola Anike Adedeji, a very humble, respected wife in the year 1933. Her home mother was Falashade Adedeji. At the time my mother got married to my father, she was number four in the house. Fourth wife. Unfortunately, we can't do that today. <laughs> Is that okay? Can we do that? No. <laughs> so she was number four in the house. Well, thank God we don't have to do that today. The light of unity was fading away in the midst of this situation. I was born on the 10th of April, 1935, at Idiroko village in Araromi, Akram, oh, yeah. which is now Onara, local government. Little can my mother do to perform a mother care on me, because the senior three wives were still looking forward to the gift of a child. <laughs> After many years, but our loving God took care of me. At my younger days, life was hard for my mother. My father's nature of work did not allow him to see what was going on in the house. For this, I lacked parental cares between 1944 till 1953. My mother spent 20 years on and off on sick bed. 
1943 until the battle was won through our home prayerful life in Jesus. Amen. The journey, part two. Now he's talking about his education. My education. Still, I appreciate the effort of my father for my care. One, he taught me the way of the Lord, as he himself was a devoted Christian. Two, he taught me to depend only on my power to struggle through life and not others' support. Three, he taught me not to compare others' achievement with mine. At his deathbed on 6th June 1947 at 2 p.m., he said to my two stepfathers, Elder Adede Jimakinde and Pastor Adede Jimakinde, before he gave up, I told you Moses, I told you Moses. In English, take care of Moses, take care of Moses. I give a big thank you to my two stepfathers for setting my feet on the right track in life. I was then placed in the care of Pastor Adedi Bamakinde. He did his best possible to push me through elementary class, standard six in 1951. That would be equivalent of sixth grade. He could not do more than this at the risk of forsaking his own children. My life career, though my dream was to get a great height in education and study geography and English language, but because of the situation I found myself, these two stepfathers decided I should go and learn building construction under one pa Amosun at Ilefe mm. and to dwell with him as my trainer. Since I have no choice, I agreed with them. My two stepfathers told me that this is my boat in which I must sail for life. They both placed it on the troubled waters of my journey in life and they let it go, leaving me with nobody to care for me again. But they prayed that Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, will see me through. Amen. Amen. Because I knew the good shepherd will always be at my side, and he is more than the troubled waters of my life. I then remember the lesson I learned from my father and my stepfathers. I picked up courage, only to depend on my power alone to struggle for my life's success. I then placed my new plan before the good shepherd, Jesus Christ. I served as an apprentice builder for three years from December 31, 1953 until December 31, 1956. During my apprenticeship, my boss placed me above all the other workmen. I really don't know why he was so. After the freedom, freedom, that's graduation. After the freedom from apprenticeship, I spent only one year with my boss that's like residency or fellowship. <laughs> I spent only one year with my boss and came to Ibadan to establish my own because I have decided to reach a greater height in education. I then registered with an architect to learn building drawing, architect J.E. Otuma. I also enrolled as a student at the Bennett College, Sheffield, England, which is the College of Building. Online? <laughs> yeah? Postage. Ah, okay. Okay, so, because there was no internet in 1953. Online, distance line, right? Correspondence. Correspondence, okay. That's Bennett College in Sheffield, England. That's why he got his diploma in building. I combined all this with my daily career to get my dream come true. I put in my very best but I still needed human supporters, which I did not get. But thank God, all this knowledge helped me. So much in my building profession, glory be to God. Amen. Amen. According to one of the plans placed before the good shepherd, Jesus Christ, I then decided to enter marriage relationship so I can get a close helper. I give all glory to God that I got one devoted bone of my bones. A very faithful, hard-working woman promised to me that she would provide the one that will love me to the heart. She was Madame Oyerunke Alao. Your kindness will always remain in gold-printed ink. But it's a pity you do not live to see the fruit of the gift you gave to me, which is Felicia, Ololade, Amokwe, Akintola, 
my mother. Glory be to God Almighty. Another important step was taking my life's journey as families gather around us for wedding ceremony after my beloved parents had given us the go ahead. Pa J. A. Akintola and Mama I J. B. Akintola from Obumosho. That happened on the 29th of December 1960. We stood at the altar of the Cherubim and Seraphim Church, Okiushupa, in Obumosho. There, Moses Ademola Makinde, our father, and Felicia Ololade Makinde, our mother, were pronounced husband and wife. The day was a day of joy and tears for me. Why? I give all glory to God for the day and for leading us through the harrowing events we went through. You are all witnesses. We're thankful to these personalities who had contributed comforts to our struggles in life. My parents in law and families in times of need. Two, Pa, F.A. Allow and family. Three, my entire Mackinac family. Four, the Awubokun's family in times of need. Five, sweetly, my sister, Adeola Oyeyebi, and our close friends. And last, Sweet Pastor Joel Oyelake Adedeji, advisor and helper. Now he wants to talk about his life as achievements. I thank God for life again for leading me through my life's journey. One, he helped me to serve in his vineyard at Okibola Seventh Day Adventist Church as lay activity and Sabbath school leader and at Irefin Church and Agugu till this day as church leader and as the very first AMM, Adventist Men's Ministry, AMM leader in the Riffin District and in Oyo State. Two, I am blessed with children, Christian children, and more importantly, Christian wife, good manager of home, faithful and hardworking. Ololade, Amakwe, Oshe, good night. Finally, my favorites. In service to God, number one, my favorite songs, SDAH 155, NYH, which is the English version. Uh, no, actually, NYH is the Yoruba, right? New Yoruba. New Yoruba, yes. So that's 109. The second one, NAH 717. And the third one, NYH 234. My Bible favorites that build my trust in Jesus, number one. Isaiah 53, from verse 1 all the way to the end. 1 Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 9 to 10, and the book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 13 to 15, and his favorite character, the life of Joseph. Thank you for listening. I will, I will. I just want her to say that. <laughs> so for me, what can I tell you about my father? All I can tell you is when it comes to Christianity, he never played. Never played with it. Everything about religion, he took very seriously. And one thing that I walk away with for how many years that I spent with him, 59 years that I spent with him, is humility. He taught me to be humble. Be very humble, be very respectful to every God's children. I saw my father, you know, talking to people that were younger than him and with so much respect and adoration. Mm. And I learned that I picked that up. So till today, that's one thing I will never, ever forget about my dad, humility. He did that, and for that, he was blessed. And I hope all of us will learn from that as well. Thank you.
was asking whether Kumi, I know maybe she's serving her own to Nigeria. So if she gets to Nigeria. So we, we, we're so thankful unto God for that. Uh, did you notice something that uh, that thing must have been written when he was in his sick bed? Because he was able to say good night. That's like Paul that we studied throughout the week who knew he was dying and was sure of where he was going. Amen. And I'm sure uh, Pa Moses McKinley knew where he was going. You know, you could hear the, the tone of that writing is the assurance of somebody who knows he's going to rest. Not to, and I, I remember when I asked the children, I asked my mother, oh, she's, she's good because she's a Christian and she knew the person that they were together. So we just, so yeah. we, are, we are going to, I think the next thing is the, another hymn, How Sweet Are the Tidings. It's at the back of the program, if you have the program. And if you don't have the program, I think it's uh, SDH 442. Wonders in 
Good afternoon, church, and happy Sabbath. My scripture reading will be coming from Job 19, 25 through 27, read from the New International Version. I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes. I and not another, how my heart yearns within me. May the Lord bless this scripture. Amen. Uh, well, uh, tribute to my father. Um, of course, I will be very brief because um, if we have to see everything, uh, we're not going to live here. Uh, but I just thank uh, God for the kind of life my father lived. My brother mentioned something about him, and, and that's the first thing that really struck all of us was um, his passion for Jesus. And uh, his passion as well to see that imparted to us. And I remember the scripture in Galatians that says, um, my little children for whom I labor with bad pangs until Christ be formed in you. It was the desire of my father that uh, we will know Christ and we will walk with him. Amen. And I thank God because the Lord helped him to achieve that in us. And um, um, secondly, uh, my dad loved education. Far from the uh, biography, well, from he said he wanted to be an English teacher, English uh, slash geography teacher. So he loved education, and um, he ensured that by the grace of God, that he put in everything, even though with the meager resources that he had with my mother to give us education. And I remember there were occasions, at least I remember one occasion when, I don't know if I was the one that asked him or maybe my brother or maybe one, of, one of my brothers, and we asked him, Dad, why everybody is buying, buying a car? Why don't you buy a car? You know, we need a car. All the parents of our colleagues, they are getting cars. Why don't you buy a car? And my father would say, or he said, you are my cars. I don't know if my brother remembers that, but I, I remember that very vividly. Well, eventually, by God's grace, he, he bought a car, WR505. <laughs> that, was, that was a Peugeot, four, Peugeot 404. <laughs> and the, the, not the registration uh, number was WR505. <laughs> and uh, he drove that for several years. So I just uh, thank God for my dad and, and my mom as well, even though she's still alive, for what the Lord used them for, for us. I will never forget him. He, 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 he was just, he was a father. He was a father. So I, I praise God for the kind of life he lived and um, his kind of commitment to the things of God. So I just pray that the Lord will help me to be committed as well to him and to impart the same uh, um, thing to our children as well, to pass that pattern across to them. I don't know if my wife. Yeah. Um, I knew uh, that uh, like um, 30 years ago when I invite my brother for one of the favorite hymns of my dad. Uh, 
I remember that song very, very well. Very, very well. It's in Yoruba, New Yoruba 237. And we'll sing it like the way he normally sang it. Okami, Atofi, Jesu Lo, Le Kansi, Ninu, Orore. He loved that so much. And we sang it a lot in the house. Oh, come here to feed Jesus, Lord, let no rore, ni sin ye, o lo wa ngok mi nun, ki wa wakba tire, mo fe, mo fe, Lorun she ran wo e mi fe je ti re e je re ye bi ye lo fi ra mi e mi yo je ti re ni po ro fa re le mi o ri anu gba lo do re i fe re se gun mi christi ni nu emi yo gba o gbo mo fe mo fe bo lo run se ran wo emi fe je ti re Jere ye bi ye lo fi ra mi e mi yo je ti re o lo wa i wo ma ile ra mi bin ko ti fe sha ko wo ni kan lo le fun mi lagbara lati jo sin fun o mo fe mo fe bo lo run se ran wo emi fe je ti re e je re ye bi ye lo fi ra mi emi yo je ti re o lo wa fo ro fe fun wa lo ni ka le ju ma ko rin ki gbo gbo wa so to kan to kan pe emi yo je ti christ mo fe mo fe bo lo run se ran wo emi fe je ti re e je re ye bi ye lo fi ra mi emi yo je ti re Thank you, thank you, thank you, the, the sons of uh, Baba Moses, uh, Mike Mide. We, we thank God. You see, uh, at times there's an adage that the apples do not fall far from the tree. So when you meet these children, even if you don't even know their parents, you know who they are. And I remember the first time I met Baba, it was at Arlington Church. Uh, the two of them has talked about his humility, and that was so feasible and so profound. The first time you meet him, you know that this is a very humble man. When he talked to me, I'm, I'm just forced to bow down because he's doing like I am the big guy. Is the, as, no, Baba, it's not like that. It's the other way around. And we thank God. 
And before the next uh, speaker speak, let me just quickly remind you, his humility was so high. He has served as elder in, uh, in Nigeria for so many, many, many years. So when I first saw him at Arlington Church, he was carrying the bowl, and I said, Baba, are you one of the officers? He said, I can't be in the church without doing anything. And he was serving as a deacon. So, I mean, that is one of the highest level of humility. So I can't be in church without doing anything. So I volunteered to be part of the deacon. Maybe you didn't know that. Okay. He was a deacon at uh, Arlington Church there. And he would dress, you wouldn't even know that he's from Nigeria. And they do everything like everybody there. So I actually I admire that. And uh, he, 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 you know, he elevates everybody that comes around him. I remember there was a little row one of, when the church was still, you know, meeting once in a month. I think I came back from work that day in the morning and uh, I told my wife, I'm not going to that church because they won't close forever. So I needed to go to Arlington. So the next Sabbath, Baba saw me. I said, ah, hey, can you put you? If you see what happened there last week, if you are there, it wouldn't have happened. I said, who am I? I said, wait, wait, since you are up there and it happened, there is nothing I could have done. That was the level of his humility and how he elevates people. So, and uh, I saw that in his children too. I mean, it's amazing. You guys will not know that how much we cherish you here. And that is the, the product of Baba Moses Makine. So we just thank God for everything. Uh, this time around, the, the pastor will be the judge pastor will be doing the homily for so those who are uh, visiting us here. This is the Seventh Day Adventist Church, having I mean, Living Spring Seventh Day Adventist Church. That's the name of the church, and the person who will be ministering to you is the minister for the church. Uh, his name is uh, uh, Doctor Cornelius Ayo Oshuntade, whichever one you can remember there. So, <laughs> so the Lord will minister to us. We are celebrating Baba's not morning. Amen. Amen. He has lived a long life and a fulfilled life. Just like when, every time people are praying for, uh, you know, my auntie, my mama, my mama, that, that she may live a long life. Stop saying that. She has lived a long life. 85 years? What she needs to do now, what we are praying for, for her to live in peace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. For the rest of our life. So, you know, once you, you get to 80, that's a long life. I mean, I don't know how long it could be. So, hallelujah. We are celebrating your daddy. We are not money. I know the emotion overtook Tony, and that is normal because you, you miss her. I mean, you miss him. It's been a long time. You will meet in heaven, and we will rejoice, and you will call him again. Amen. So, Pastor Shuntade will be ministering to us at this time. And uh, please enjoy the, the message of, uh, you know, joy and the celebration that will be coming from him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Eladi Poju, for uh, those words of inspiration. Uh, I want to recognize all our guests who normally don't fellowship with us regularly here, but because of this program, they have come. Please, uh, we want to humbly request that you stand up. Uh, I want to offer a special prayer for you, those of you who have come to celebrate with the Marky Days and who don't normally attend this church regularly. Thank you all. Uh, let, let, please bow your heads. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for our guests who have come to fellowship with us. I want to pray that you send your Holy Spirit into their heart. I pray that their coming here will be a blessed one. And I want to pray that you will go into their private lives and look into the various things that they want you to do for them. And because they come today to fellowship, please answer their prayers. And I pray, Father, that, Lord, you will bless them as well to be able to be in heaven with you on the resurrection morning. 
so that all of us together here and those who are not here will be together with you. Bless our guests today, minister to their needs, wrought miracles for them, forgive their sins. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please be seated. God bless you for coming. Uh, the title of this short homily is The Book of Remembrance. The Book of Remembrance. Um, and I want to uh, look at the way we record uh, incidents, especially in our world. We have a lot of uh, technological improvement in the world today. Uh, we have a lot of things, gadgets that we use in recording uh, incidents that happen that we want to review. For example, in our church, we just installed uh, security cameras in the church. So we see everywhere, um, people coming in, people going out, wherever you are, we see you. We see everything. And everything is being recorded, yes. And um, I want to use the example of, uh, or the, 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 the experience of uh, my brother, Pastor Abraham Bin Zua. You know, he went to Barbies here, and he left his wallet somewhere in the barber shop, and um, somebody took it away. But there was a security camera recording everything. Yes. So he went to the barber shop. The barber uh, manager said, okay, when my boss arrives, we are going to look at the camera to see who actually took your wallet. And so they reported to the police. The police said, okay, uh, we will see how we are going to get through to the camera to be able to see who took your wallet. And Pastor Abraham had been running up and down. He went to the gas station. Uh, the police said, meet me at the gas station. He went there about two to three times. He was looking all over. But they were always having a reason why he would not be able to get the camera so that they would know who stole the wallet. That is human system for you. Yes. For example, we have a camera here. Does that camera stop evil from coming to the church? No, it doesn't stop any evil from coming to the church. The camera is there for us to know who comes here to commit any evil or atrocity, isn't it? But you see, the God of heaven has an intelligent outfit that is better than any intelligent outfit that we have in the world today. And I'm wondering how God is doing it. We have close to 8 billion people in the world. And yet the Bible records that there is a book of remembrance for everybody. Close to 8 billion people. In Malachi chapter 3 verse 16, he said, Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened attentively and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and esteem his name. So there is a book of remembrance for every one of us. I have my own. You have your own. So you cannot hide from God. The camera of God is in your bedroom. The camera of God is in your toilet. <laughs> the camera of God is in your offices. You cannot hide from God. God says here, yeah, I record everything that you are doing in this world. Everything is being recorded. Everything. That song, he sees all you do. He hears all you say. My Lord is writing all the time. God is writing everything. We can't run away from that. Now, if we know that, why do we still do evil in the corners of our rooms? Or why do we do evil in our heart? When we know that the camera of God is even right in our heart, recording everything that we do. Now, I was discussing with my wife. Now, when, when, we, when, when, when we get to heaven, how does God do it? Because, let's see, 
Sometimes we do some evil. Sometimes we do some good. Everything is being recorded. The evils we do is recorded. The good we do is recorded. How does God balance it when we get to heaven? And we read from uh, one of Sister White's book. It's in our lesson study this morning. That when we go into the grave, whatever dispositions we go into the grave with is the same disposition that we will rise up with. So it means then that when Jesus comes to take us home, he wants us to be in good standing. He doesn't want us to be dilly-dallying in our Christian journey. Then that means that what we die doing is what we are going to resurrect doing on the resurrection morning. And that is why it is important. We're talking about daddy writing all those things down on a sick bed. He knew he was going to die, and he knew he was going to face his death. He had the opportunity to make it right with God, right? Not every one of us will have that opportunity to make it right with God. So as God is writing in the book of remembrance, it is important for us to note that the book of remembrance cannot be tampered with like the recording was tampered with for Pastor Abraham. He tried to get it. He couldn't get it. But the book of remembrance that God is writing is a book of remembrance that nobody can tamper with. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, if we read from verse 58, there is a good news for all those of us who love the Lord and who do his will. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So everything you do is being recorded. So your labor is not in vain because you will reap the reward when Jesus comes back. And then the last Bible passage I'm going to read is in Revelation chapter 14. And I'm going to read verse 13. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works. Follow them. Did you hear that? So whatever you do follows you. Whatever I do follows me. And I want to thank God that Daddy Mackinde had the effrontery to write his biography down because he knew he was going to die. So this means that he was ready. He was ready. And because he was ready, he died peacefully in the Lord. And we have a hope of seeing him on the resurrection morning. But the point is this. Remember that there is a book of remembrance, right? That is being written by the angels every day. Sometimes I look at myself. If I go into those corners and I want to do evil, I say, God, I know you are there watching me. I know. <laughs> and that is it. God is watching. We can't run away from God. My question is this. What is God writing in your book of remembrance? What is it? Is he writing evil? Will your evil outweigh your good? Or will your good outweigh your evil? What will Jesus meet you doing on the day you are going to die? What is Jesus going to catch you doing? Are you going to be doing his will or you are going to be doing the will of Satan? This is a very, very pertinent question. Remember, he sees all you do. He hears all you say. My Lord is writing all the time. I want you to bow your heads and ask God to give you the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to be resilient in doing his will. That whatever stone the devil throws at you will not in any way hurt your feelings to the extent that you will stop doing the will of God. You want to hold on to God for the rest of 
of your life so that in your book of remembrance, you, you will have it said about you. Enter into the joy of your father. Please pray for yourself. God said in Malachi 3.16, I'm writing everything down. There is a book of remembrance for every one of us. And we cannot in any way pervert that book. We cannot change anything that is there. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would help us to become Christians after your heart, like David was a man after your heart. Lord, we know the angels are all over writing everything down according to what we read in the Bible. You are writing everything down. You are writing our thoughts down. You are writing our actions, our deeds, everything you are writing them down. Lord, help us, Lord, to do your will all the time. We don't want to do your will haphazardly. We want to do your will with all our hearts so that in our book of remembrance, it's going to be joy. It's going to be good news, not bad news. And I want to thank you for Daddy Mackinde. You got him ready for his death. And he was able to make it right with you. Lord, not every one of us will have this opportunity. So, Father, help us not to be careless. Help us to live every day as if in the next minute you are going to come or as if in the next minute we are going to die. Please help us, Lord, to be true to you. Help us to be faithful to you. Lord, I want to pray this day that you will please give all of us the opportunity to make it right with you. Each, each evening we sleep, you wake us up in the morning. Help us that whenever we wake up, we'll be able to live a sanctified life on a daily basis. Sanctified lives in the mighty name of Jesus. So that, Father, when we see you on the sea of glass, and our book of remembrance are opened. Our books of remembrance are opened. Help us, Lord, to hear that good news. Enter into the joy of your Father. Let it be that that is going to be our experience. It's not because we are worthy, but because of your grace. And we know that you are not judging us according to our works. We know that your grace is the only thing that will give us eternity. But we pray that you will help us to do our best to make you happy. Help us to make you happy when we go out, when we come in. Help us to make you happy when we are sleeping, when we are eating, when we are driving, when we are flying. Help us to make you happy always. Thank you, Jesus, because you have answered our prayers. Blessed be your name. Forgive us our sins this afternoon, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hi, everyone. Okay, so the next um, scripture reading is Titus. Chapter 2, verses 13 to 15. And since this is a 
favorite um, verse. I'm going to read it in Yoruba. <laughs> I haven't read Yoruba in like 10 years, so bear with me. <laughs> so, Tai to Ori Keji. It's a metal asi. Medok. Okay. Kia maduro de ibukunti areti. Ati ifara on ogo oloru enila. Ati ti olubala wa Jesu Christi. Eni ti o fi arare funwa. Lati rawa pada kuro ninu. Bobo adbara eshe. Ati lati we wamo lati. Fi wa she eni tire. Ti o ma lakaka. Lati she ishe rere. Ba yini ki o ma wifun wan. Ki o ma fi ba wani yonju. Ki o si ma ba wan wi ni ba bo do pe lo a she. Ma ba foun eni keni. Lati fo ju tembe lo. Tembe lo re. May the Lord bless the rest of us. I guess this time around we are going to watch some slideshow. So let's relax and enjoy that.
Good afternoon, saints. My name is Samuel Oyerokun. That's my wife there. And the lady who couldn't talk is my daughter. <laughs> I'm going to start them for her. I also seize this opportunity to thank the Almighty God for the victory over sin and death secured for us by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through his death, resurrection, and ascension. This tribute is presented on behalf of my family to our great grandfather, grandfather, father, and of course, a unique in-law, Pa Moses Ademola Makinde. The two families came into closer contact and relationship in 1997 when our daughter, Oluto Yin, is getting married to Ezekiel Makinde. However, before we became in-laws, both my families originated from the same Egbeda local government, Ibadan Oyo State in Nigeria. And besides this bond, my wife Alice and Pa have known each other because pa, Papa Makinde is related to Madam Omabwade Adekola, the youngest wife of Pa Daniel Adekola, who happens to be my wife's father. Our tribute is primarily celebrating not the death of our beloved, but the legacy Papa Makinde has left behind. The legacy is designed to be viewed from the lenses of Papa Makinde's faith, fame, and family, all together encapsulated in Psalm 119, verses 11 and 89, and 105, Proverbs 22, 6, and 2 Timothy Verse, uh, chapter 3, verses 15 to 17. First, Papa Makinde's faith. Papa Makinde's faith is contagious. He lived entirely as a devoted Christian. He came from the family of believers and unashamedly preached the word in season and out of season as recorded in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. He never toiled with the word of God. Instead, he heard the Bible as holy, inerrant, infallible word of God. Amen. He willingly obeyed as Abraham did, joyfully praised as David worshipped, and heartily prayed as Moses and Daniel interceded. In fact, almost all people connected with him cherish his heartwarming, heaven-shaking prayers, most of which were backed by God's eternal promises. From our exchange of visits in New York and Nigeria, my wife and I have, inver have inherited the term Ileologo, Meaning, we Christians should always pray we do not miss God's prepared mansions for his saints. Amen. Second, Pa Moses Makinde's fame is based on his favorable reports. He worked in a construction company in the construction industry where his diligence, responsibility, and accountability could not be matched. He was not only known for his reliability, but also for his pleasant human relations and clean moral habits. Amen. He will always ensure that his, his Christian worldview impacted his deeds and actions. He spent his leisure constructively in Agogo and Enveros, either playing a your game or helping neighbors. Amen. Thirdly, Pa was an exemplary family life. He built, 
maintained and nurtured a really functional, God-fearing, and an enviable home. He loved and trained all his children. Unlike many of his kind, he was a loving father, faithful husband, trustworthy worker, and a caring neighbor. No doubt, these outstanding qualities Parma Kindi demonstrated certainly must have endeared and drawn us to his family. It is also not surprising that Parma Kindi has raised children who are renowned in ministry, academia, and industry. Amen. Finally, Parma Kindi will fondly be remembered as a true servant of the living God. Amen. May he so rest in perfect peace. We all look forward to that great eternal reunion, though no longer as in-laws, but as saints with stars on our crowns, Amen. dancing around the throne of our all-powerful, all-seeing, all-knowing God. Until then, Sonreo. Um, so we have a we have a quick special song um, that we are going to sing as a as a family. It's actually going to be played uh, um, on the on the screen. So uh, if you guys want to rise with us, whatever you want to do, uh, and just and just follow us with it. So if the media team would kindly uh, put those words on there, and we will get to singing. And uh, it's uh it's one of the oldies uh, that I that I like, and I'm sure there's a lot of people here who know that that song. So if you guys would be kind enough. Uh, to project that on the screen for us. Guys, will write us, write, uh, rise with us as we sing these songs, please.
I ask if the church will rise with, will rise with us as we sing this last stanza, please. If you don't rise, please. Thank you. so much. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, thank you. That was a wonderful one. I know some of some people may not understand the 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 meaning, but at least we enjoy the lyrics, isn't it? We enjoy all the lyrics, and I I know some of you are trying to sing with them because it's uh, it's written there. Uh, you know, the summary of it is just that uh, Jesus is the pilot. And as we fly away, it will take all, it will land safely. And when Jesus is your pilot, aren't you sure you will have a safe landing? Yes. There is no, no, no matter how tempestuous the wind may be, you will land safely. Yes. Because he is the creator of everything. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, before we let the, so that they can take a little breath, we will, I want to, you know, appeal to all our, our guests, particularly those who have come for this purpose to please uh, stand up. We have some special gift for you that uh, Baba Moses will like to give to you if you are to be here personally. So please stand up so that we can recognize you. You are a guest, you have come for this purpose. Be on your feet, please. Can you help me quickly? So let some other people join the downwards and the rest of them to quickly give to everyone who has come for this occasion to grace this occasion with uh, this family. Let's do that quickly. I know two things you will not miss when you come to Delivering Spring. You will go with some spiritual blessings, gift, and our pastor will pray for you just like he pray for you now. So you, won't, you, you can't miss those things, two, two important things. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So you can sit down after you have received it so we know who is, who is remaining. Any other person? So don't go without having one. So Moses will be happy to give you that. Amen. I'm sure the grandchildren, you, you have been able to catch your breath now. So you can come forward and give your trip. But all of you can come, and uh, you know, one after the other. You know. We want to see those grandchildren together. The ones that, the ones that are here. <laughs> All right, I'll keep this short because I'm too emotional. <laughs> I'm good. Anyway, so most of my memories with Grandpa involved him singing and praying. When I was younger, every quarter, we would go to my grandparents' house for fasting and prayer sessions, and my Grandpa would sing and pray, and those prayers were long. <laughs> or maybe they seemed that way because it was getting between me and the mala in the kitchen. But again, <laughs> it was always singing and praying. There was a time he and uh, Grandma came to our house and stayed for a couple of weeks. And I remember that during those weeks, it taught me how to pray in Yoruba. I'm glad that I got to spend the first half of my life or so knowing him. And he led a godly life. And I can only hope and pray that I do the same, even when I am old and gray. Amen. Well, my tribute isn't short at all, um, but I will, uh, I will make this as, as, fast as, uh, as fast as possible. 
<clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Oluwa Tamilore Balumi Makinde, or better still, Adeolu, as my grandfather would call me. And I am the seventh grandchild of Pa Moses Ademola Makinde. My grandfather, Moses Makinde, was privileged to hold several citizenships during his time here on Earth. He was a Nigerian citizen, an American citizen, but most importantly, he was a citizen of the Heavenly Kingdom. You know, it always brought me joy every time I spoke with my grandfather on the phone because our conversations usually went something like this. Grandpa Ekpele, Baolarai, to which he always replied, Baba Antojuwa, which quite literally means, my father is taking care of me. You see, my grandfather was so confident and so trusting of his heavenly father, so much that even when his body was gradually failing him, his assurance in his father never wavered. And I am so sure that even in his last moments here on earth, he was rest assured that his father would take care of him. I have to admit that such courage in one's heavenly father is not something I come by every day, which is why I'm going to miss this attribute most dearly about him. You know, it's been said by my dad and uncles that my grandfather was a no-nonsense disciplinarian. Fortunately, I'm glad none of the grandchildren experienced that side of him. <laughs> Although that's not to say that he didn't discipline me a time or two. One of his favorite lines of discipline in conjunction with my grandmother was, Adiolu, Abuku is writing letter to you whenever I engaged in certain mischievous ways. Now the thing is, whenever Abuku started writing a letter to you, there's a great chance that the remedy for Abuku, his younger brother, Abara, is going to remedy the situation and reset you back to your factory settings. All that being said, I have to say that while I am sad, I will never see my grandfather again in this world. I am grateful to God Almighty for the shared memories I had with him, even if some of them were interrupted by a few abaras or so. I am beyond grateful that Moses Ademola Makinde got the chance to meet all his grandchildren and even the first great-granddaughter of the Makinde heritage. I am grateful because of the confidence I have that Moses Makinde was a man after God's own heart, and I am beyond confident that I will see him soon and very soon when we take that beautiful flight to eternal glory alongside the king. My dearest grandpa, Moses Makinde. I, I told myself I wasn't going to cry this, this afternoon, um, but uh, I brought some handkerchiefs with me just in case. <laughs> My dearest grandpa, Moses Makinde, continue to rest in your Savior's arms. We shall surely meet again. In a, place where, in a place where joy has no end. Thank you. Jimmy, you don't want to cry. <laughs> Jimmy was not ready to cry, so he would rather just uh, let it go. You want to say something? Oh, okay. Okay, so we go to the church members now. And uh, I think uh, this is one of the church members. <laughs> <laughs> Just because he said that, I'm not going to give him the microphone to speak. <laughs> I will not call on him. Yeah, some of us here had the opportunity to worship with my dad, you know, when we're still in Bear Creek Church over there. So I'm not going to call on everybody. I'm going to pick maybe two, maybe three people that I know for sure they really, really want to say something about him. Everybody that knew him, you have something that you want to say. So I'm going to put people on the spot, and these are the people I'm going to call. Auntie Becky Dada, I'm going to call on her, because I know she knew her very, very well. Do you want me to bring a microphone to you, or do you want to come up? All right. Then after her, when she's done, I'm going to give just two minutes to everybody. After that, Daddy Isiaka will be the next person that I'm calling because I know he also wants to say something about him as well. Do we have a microphone that we can give to her, please? Oh. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, my husband was transferred to the mission at Okebola in 1984. So I had to, I was, we were 
both in Ikiru district. So both of us had to leave and move to Ibadan. I got to Ibadan July 1984, and uh, within a few months, I was I became the superintendent for the Sabbath school. And that was what brought me in contact with Daddy Makindi. He was the, at that time, the activities leader. What we now call personal ministries leader. That's uh, that was his uh, office. He was a very active man. But at the time, there wasn't much because the activities was within the church rather than out of the church. And so when, whenever they were going on visitation, as the superintendent that was supposed to go with them, was so okay, just once in a while. I didn't get much. I, I mean, there wasn't much between us until 1987. In 1987, the director for lay activities at the general conference here, in Washington, D.C., was sent to Nigeria to conduct a seminar. The seminar was for the lay activities leaders. That's the, the elders who were in charge of lay activities in the church. They all came to Okebola. I didn't have anything to do with them, actually, but they were having morning worship and evening worship. So the very first worship was on Sunday. And because it was Sunday, I wasn't going to school. I decided to go to the church to worship with uh, the visitors that we had. And I enjoyed it. The director that came, his name was uh, Elder Monye. My brother was at that meeting. Abi, yes, <laughs> he came from Lagos as a representative from Lagos. I enjoyed what I had. So I decided to make sure that I attend every, every morning before going to school. Eventually, I attended everything. It was so catchy. It was a new approach to evangelism. You want to evangelize? I mean, it's not just going from house to house, praying with people, there were other things. He brought some books, brought a lot of things. It was a very, a very moving, one week experience that we all had. And each person was challenged that within six months of the seminar, everybody should go and could conduct an, a, a, a crusade, let me call it that an outreach. Elder Mackinde was the representative for our own church, Okibola Church. So he just came to me one after, uh, Sabbath afternoon, said, we are going to conduct an outreach in Crane. Crane is a cocoa research. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering why he was telling me. Because I, have just, I had just finished conducting a revelation seminar at that time, and I was physically tired. And I was thinking, yes, I think I can rest. But daddy came and said, I said so what is the information about? He said, you are going to be one of my team members. I said, team member, I've just finished one. Say, Sister Becky, they call me Sister Becky in the Makinde house. Because Toro Makinde, she's my junior sister. So I'm very close to the Makindes. And everybody calls Sister Becky, Sister Becky, whether it's young or old. So that is it, Sister Becky. I don't want to say you. I don't want to say you. I don't want to say you. What is this? Well, eventually he convinced me and I joined the team. And we started going to Crane every Sabbath afternoon. We would go visit the people around that place, the workers, uh, 
some Ibadan people who have settled in that area. Luckily, we had two of our elders, Daddy Ola mm -hmm. and uh, Mama Yola. Mm -hmm. Mama Yola is an African American married to mm -hmm. Ibadu or somebody. Mm -hmm. And they, they had their house in that area. So both, both of them accepted to, you know, do the underground work. And especially when we were unable to go there, they would go around and visit. To the glory of God, today there's a church in Crane, a Seventh-day Adventist church, Amen. where some workers are worshiping. Many people don't remember Daddy McKinney, but they remember Sister Becky, who was the, the name. They don't even know me, but they know that name. Sister Becky Dada, Sister Becky Dada. So some people felt I was the one who started it. No. Daddy McKinney was the one who organized the team. That's number one. Number two, when we finished with the Crane, Daddy Makide told me that the next place we are going to work at is Professor Oyelese's house. I didn't mind because I know Baba very well. So he made the arrangement and Daddy accepted us, gave us a room, and we started going there. What struck me was that Every Bible study we had, Professor Yelese would be there. And he would contribute, and he would give us new insights to things we were studying. He brought out many books from his library, gave them to us so that we can read them and they get more information about the Bible study that we were having. Within a month of I was starting that Bible study. It was Sabbath afternoon. We just finished service. And I was going home when somebody called me and said, I have some visitors. And that they were already, they were told that I was in the church and they were sitting in front of the church. And I've just finished in the church. I've just told them we should not be making noise in the church. You want to greet when you finish church, go outside and, mm -hmm. and greet. Mm -hmm. So when I saw the visitors, I just did like this. Come, 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 come. And I didn't know the time I got to the, the steps. I just slipped and I fell. And I couldn't get up. I was carried a piggyback back home. That was the end of my activities with the group because my leg was in cast and I could no longer go with the, our team. But within a month of my no longer, somebody else was leading with Baba. They was always going and they continued with the Bible studies. One Sabbath morning, I just got to church, and the news, Professor Ojilese is dead. The man whose house we were using, everybody was shocked. It was not that he was not old enough to die. I can't remember the age. Sister? 70 something. But to everybody, he was too young to die. Mm -hmm. To everybody in Okebola, was too young to die. But the, the, what touched me was before his death, when I had that fall and my leg was in cast, he came to our house to, 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 to just to visit. And he said something. He said he was happy that we were having the Bible studies in his house, that it had helped him to make a recommitment with Jesus. Amen. So before his death, he had a recommitment with Jesus. 
I was not the one who started it. God used Elder McKinney for us to start that Bible studies. And it was that Bible studies that made Professor Yelese's death. I mean, it was no longer crying business, but rejoicing. Everybody was happy. I didn't make the tribute in the church because my leg was in cast. And uh, this is a professor. The whole of UI, <laughs> they were all in the church. But that was exactly what happened. So each time I think about that and Elder McKinney's activities within the Okebola Church, you know, he did a marvelous work. And I remember that the challenge to go and make, uh, to create small, small groups within Ibadan led him to go back to Agugu mm -hmm. to start the Agugu Church, making number three. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, ma'am. Really appreciate that. Things I didn't even know about my dad, I'm learning them. So it's going to be Daddy Isiaka, and after him, just one person that I'm going to give the microphone to just in the interest of time. I want to thank God for this opportunity. Um, I met Daddy at the Arlington Church. There are two men in this congregation that were my mentors. I did not know the children of her papa, Makide. I did not know FM. I didn't know Ezekiel Makide. But I knew Daddy. I used to sit with him in the church. And I would just enjoy it hanging and rock with him. When I say I know these two men, the other man is Papa Molomo. I met both of them in my early developing Christian life. And I can still say today that I'm still developing to become a Christian. Mm -hmm. But knowing people that more like you look up to, it's a good feeling. Mm -hmm. Knowing people that you want to emulate, people that you feel, wow, they are up there. I'm still here, but I want to be like them. We all want to be like Jesus. Amen. And eternity is our home. Amen. We talk about Mommy Lomo, 85. We're praying for her to be uh, 90, 95, 1, mm -hmm. one and ten. I want to pray for her to be living in eternity Amen. forever and ever. Amen. My Amen. small little advice to the children of Baba Makinde, let us carry on his legacy. Amen. And Amen. It shall be well with all of you. Amen. 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 Jesus. If you look in your bulletin or if you've been listening to the autobiography that I read, my father had five children, all boys. Eitayo, that's the older brother for me. Fuluwasho, that's me. For you VA people, now you know my middle name. Toyin is number three, right there. Remy is in Nigeria. And Dewale is number five in Nigeria. But. I'm going to reveal a secret to the congregation today. There are actually six of us. 
Yeah, stop looking at me. There are actually six of us. My father actually had a girl that nobody knew about. But I'm going to reveal to you today my father's daughter from Cadillac. Come on over. Don't be shy. They know you now. The secret daughter that he had that he didn't tell anybody, y'all going to know today. <laughs> Thank you very much. Baba Makinde just fell in love with me the very first time he met me. I experienced his deep love that time that my late husband died. He would go to Makinde's to the house. And his passionate prayers helped me a lot and the children during the saddest time of our lives. He actually wept with us. And many years, he still kept in touch. When Dr. Makinde went home to Nigeria, can you believe Baba said, Gary, <laughs> to me and the children. I, I know that we see him again. Amen. Amen. I pray that God will be with you, all the children and grandchildren. Amen. I pray that there will always be someone there for you. Amen. No matter what you are going to go through, <laughs> the angels of the Lord will always be there for you. Amen. And Amen. God will always prepare you ahead. Amen. Like God prepared Esther ahead for the for the Jews. Amen. God will always prepare someone ahead Amen. for you Amen. for your time of hardship. Amen. And I want to thank you for this, Dr. Markinet. And the family, may God bless you. Amen. Every single time I talk to my dad, he's always asking, the Living Spring Church, how is everybody doing? How is Funke doing? He always asks after her every single time. I'm not sure I'm going to have another opportunity, but I want to take just one moment to acknowledge and thank my co-workers, that are here today. You've been calling them visitors, visitors, visitors. I spend my waking hours with them. They drive me crazy. I drive them crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I've been rocking it for the last 10, 15, 20, 20 plus years. So I'm going to call their name. They're going to stand up. Please help me welcome them with a big amen. Hand on Richard Singh. We've been together 23 years. He's the oldest man in the clinic, and he's still there. Welcome, boss. Thank you, thank you. Louis Ortiz. This man practically planted the VA in Dallas. He's been there forever. Come on, start me go. That's my friend right there. We've been together for so long as well. So long we've been together. Hannah Ramos. What can I say? And our husband, Irwin, both of them, very nice, nice people. I've known her now also for maybe about 15 years that I've been in VA now, maybe together. So that's Hannah, she's our physical therapy. Luis Ortiz is our nurse manager in the clinic. Then I also have another sister. And as soon as she stands up, you're gonna know why she's my sister. Sherilyn Medlock. You see what she's wearing on? A true sister. You see, until she talks, then you hear the American accent coming out. But she's got my just off on for today. Thank you, Miss Medlock. Thank you. I appreciate you. For everybody that is here, the program is just about to end, and very, very soon we will entertain you. Let's just hang in there. You 
almost be over. Hmm? Where is Miss Maxwell? Somebody, my good, you see? Pastor Bizua, I always tell you I have a Ghanaian sister. Now today you will meet her. She's hiding. I cannot see her. Jenny Maxwell, stand up, please. Bill Maxwell, stand up, please. Woo! Thank you so much. I told you not to wear black, Jenny. Didn't I tell you? <laughs> and she still got black on. You see? That's why I didn't see her. That's my favorite sister right there, Jenny Maxwell. She's a nurse practitioner in the clinic. We've been together as well. We have so much fun in that place. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Welcome, everyone. At this time, we're going to have a word of prayer for the family. Please, um, if we can just uh, take a step forward, and then we'll pray. There is a lot in store for this family as they plan for uh, the burial of their father. And we have a hope that the grave where they're going to put him is a temporary place because we have resurrection morning that is coming up. So um, I know there will be a lot of emotions at the graveyard. But um, God has a plan that the grave is not going to be a permanent place for us. And so it's a good news that daddy planned for his death. And uh, we have the assurance of his resurrection Amen. when Jesus comes. The challenge is for each one of us who are still living to also make it right with God uh, before it is too late. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, I'm unworthy to pray for this family because I am a sinner, a sinner in need of your grace. But I thank you for the message of Brother Yokaindi that no matter how sinful we may be, you have forgiven us. And that you don't even remember those sins anymore. So because of this, I'm standing on Jesus, the solid rock, the rock of ages, who died for my sin. And thank you that you have forgiven me. So I pray this day for this journey that your children have embarked upon. The journey to lay pa Moses to a temporary place of rest until you come to wake him up again. As they go, let your Holy Spirit be with them. Amen. Send your angels to accompany them. Amen. And I pray that there will be no regret of any kind. Amen. When they are driving, Father, drive with them. When they are flying, daddy, fly with them. Amen. Lord, I want to pray for comfort. When you were leaving this world, you promised to send the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that as the Mackindays open their heart, let the comforter come into their heart. Amen. I want to pray, Lord, that now that daddy is resting temporarily, you will unite this family even more. Amen. Lord, I pray that you will bless them with financial means Amen. so that, Lord, every need will be supplied Amen. and there will be no regret of any kind. I want to pray that the children of Daddy Mackinde 
will have a glorious future. We agree together this afternoon that Father, all the children of Daddy will receive abundant blessings from you. Blessings, immeasurable blessings beyond human comprehension. Please grant it to them, Lord. And I want to pray that you will keep them like the apple of your eyes. That, Father, no one will be able to harm them in any way. Lord, we want to agree together as a church family that the Mackinnies will experience exponential grace from you. Grace to be able to navigate the difficult terrain of the world so that, Father, they will not miss Daddy Makinde who passed on because you are going to be a generous father to them. And I want to thank you because you have answered our prayers. We thank you for all our aged ones who are still alive. And we thank you because you are sustaining them. We pray that those of us who are coming behind will also be able to live a life of Christian adoration, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, because you have answered our prayers. As we round up this program, we invite you to please bless each one that has come. Our coming here today will not be for any regret, but we will use this opportunity that we have come to fellowship to glorify you, to lift you up in our lives, so that, Father, this service of songs will uh, draw us closer to your throne room of grace. Thank you because you have answered our prayers. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Please be seated. Amen. Uh, on behalf of our family, I want to thank God for this uh, privilege he has given us to be able to have this program. I want to thank the church pastor and uh, the leadership of the church for allowing us to have this. And I want to thank all the all our guests from different places, people who came around to uh, uh, witness this occasion. I can't start mentioning your names individually. We have already acknowledged, my brother has acknowledged the presence of the VA guys. I want to thank you again and I pray that the Lord will bless you. And for other visitors as well, I want to thank you so much for uh, for your patience and uh, for your love uh, and, uh, in helping us to grace this occasion. And of course, I thank the church members as well uh, for all your patience and for all your support as well uh, to make this program a success. So I pray the Lord will continue to bless all of us and uh, it will help us to always live with an awareness of the imminence of his presence, of his coming so that we will live our lives to please him and we will live our lives to touch others for him and bring them into his kingdom. So I thank everybody uh, for uh, this, uh, uh, for your show of love. Uh, immediately after the program, uh, we'll have some refreshment for everybody and uh, particularly for, of course, it's for everybody and for our visitors, you might want to take some away. We have takeaways as well. So please don't, please don't go away, please. Uh, We'll just move to the fellowship hall and then you can do the takeaway if you want if you don't want to sit down and that will be that will be nice and of course for everybody as well. So I pray the Lord will bless us and He will continue to keep us by the power of His Spirit. He will help us to live a fulfilled life that will bring Him glory and honor and touch others for Him. Amen. So thank you very much. The, the song is written okay it's gonna be play okay. so we just rise and uh, sing along everybody
your name that you have a plan for us according to Jeremiah 29 11 you have a plan to give us a hope and a future and our hope is not limited to this sinful world our hope is not limited to this sin sick world Lord, we want to live in view of eternity. We don't want to live as if this is our permanent home. So give us the self-control to be able to resist the pleasurable things of this world. Because the Bible says in John chapter 2 that these things... First John chapter 2, these things are passing away. So give us the courage to close our eyes to the things of this world, Amen. but to open our eyes to the things of heaven. Amen. Lord, we are celebrating the life of Daddy Moses Mackinde. We trust in you that we are going to see him again on the resurrection morning. Amen. Help us, Lord, to get ourselves ready as well. So that any time death comes knocking at our doors, we hold on to Jesus. Amen. Believing that when you come on the resurrection morning, we will we'll wake up if we are dead to see you. And if we are still alive, we'll have our lives transformed Lord, we cannot wait to be in heaven with you. We cannot wait to leave those 1,000 years in heaven. We cannot wait to come back to this world and live forever and ever and ever. So, Father, grant us this privilege and help us not to misuse this opportunity that you have given to us. May your name be glorified. Bless your children as they go home. We'll be eating some provisions that... You have granted to us. Please bless this food provision. And we also pray that, Father, our guests will be encouraged to love you with all their lives. And until that day when we are going to meet again, whether here or in heaven, I pray that we'll remain faithful. Faithful to our election. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen.